This is a special presentation of Farm Journal Television. It's time for your lesson in corn. I'm Clinton Griffiths and welcome to Corn College TV. Today we're breaking down the nitrogen cycle. Learning how this essential input works can add big bucks on the back end. Later, we head to the field to look at getting plants growing at the same rate, fixing uneven emergence and upping ear count, and using technology to see what your eyes can't. NDVI is a term growers will want to know. All this and questions for our agronomists today on Corn College TV. Welcome to Corn College TV with field agronomist Ken Ferry, associate field agronomist Missy Bauer, Farm Journal's Margie Fisher, and host Clinton Griffiths. Well, hello there. I'm glad you're sitting in for today's class. As a farmer, there's nothing more important than making sure your crops are getting the nutrients they need. Nitrogen is one of those, and it shouldn't be taken lightly. Applying the right amount at the right time can produce big rewards. Recently, I caught up with field agronomist Ken Ferry for a lesson on this always important input. Ken, nitrogen is going to be one of the most expensive things we're putting on every year to grow corn. It probably helps to understand exactly how it works. Yeah, the nitrogen cycle itself is, is somewhat complicated, but you're right. The more a farmer understands about it, the less trouble we get into. For instance, the losses, if they understand what the risk of loss is from leaching or denitrification or volatility, it helps them maybe in their positioning of their products, that type of thing. The, the other thing I think farmers maybe not understand or maybe don't realize that in most soils, there's probably between three to 6,000 pounds of organic nitrogen stored in that soil. Already there. Already there, and we're hoping to use a couple, 3% of that to help grow our crop. Um, and, and it's everything's gotta be in sync for that to happen. And pH plays a part of your nitrogen program as well as rooting depth and all that kind of thing. But in a lot of cases, the nitrogen that we're applying to the field are part of their job is to stimulate this uh, or inorganic nitrogen release from the soil itself to okay. get the microbes to work for them. All right, so you're trying to get those microbes to give you what's already there and that's why you're applying more. To some extent, yeah. And the other thing is those microbes take away nitrogen. It's temporarily taken away in a, a situation where they go to decompose residue from the past crop. So they immobilize nitrogen uh, in the microbial population and eventually it'll be mineralized back out into the system. Respecting how much power they have in the immobilizing side is kind of important because uh, it can create a lot of problems for farmers in a corn on corn program. Okay, well let's start with the with the system and, and the nitrogen cycle and how it works. Well, when we, we look at a, a nitrogen cycle, again, I like to, and you see a lot of times, put in a circle type situation where we're putting products into the system and the system is putting products back out the other side. In a situation where the typical cornfield, somewhere between 30 to 70% of the nitrogen we need is gonna come out of this system. Okay. Uh, so it depends on the soils themselves. And you see some tremendous yields on certain farms with hardly any nitrogen. It's because the system's given them a lot back. Right. Now that means the system has a lot of nitrogen in it and microbially everything's in good shape. But the microbes that are gonna decompose the residue, eventually that nitrogen will come back into the system. That nitrogen will be released as an ammonium nitrogen. And once it's in the ammonium form, it can be used by other microbes. It can be used by the corn plant. If there's a surplus of this ammonium, it'll eventually be converted to nitrate. Mm -hmm. and, and for a corn plant, it's geared to take up large amounts of nitrate. Okay. So nitrate is really what we want in the corn plant itself. And our microbes can also use nitrate. Right. But this is your end goal uh, as far as making sure there's enough nitrate at all times through the corn plant's life. So managing the early decomposition in a corn on corn program and making sure you got enough staying power for the nitrate on the back side. And it, nitrate is that area where it's very susceptible to loss. So okay. uh, again, understanding how much of their nitrogen is in this form can make a big difference. Should I protect it with an inhibitor? Should I break up my applications? How much risk is involved of losing that nitrate? Right. Can you get more or get your microbes to work harder for you? Is there a way to do that? Well, one of the first things we'd look at to get them to work harder would be uh, pH. Uh, they're, they got a narrow pH window where they want to be in, and that 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5 range is where we like to hold those pHs so we can keep the microbes doing their job. We get an acid soil, we slow that microbial population down, and when that happens, we're going to slow down uh, this whole process. Right. Um, the other scenario is, is um, you know, when we incorporate residue into the soil, that's where the microbes live, we speed that process up. 
So if we're trying to speed it up, one of the ways to get the microbes to work faster is put the residue where they live. If we're trying to slow it down, uh, we want to conserve residue, then we wouldn't want to do that. When Corn College TV returns, smaller plants, smaller ears, and reduced yields can be a sign of uneven emergence. Missy Bauer heads to the field to explain what may be causing these problems in your field. Corn College TV is brought to you by DeKalb. For all season strong performance and results you can take to the bin. Go with DeKalb. gets results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry-leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Hello, folks. This is Mark Gold with Top Third Ag Marketing. If you need help marketing your grains or livestock, give us a call. We offer one-on-one -on -one relationships that can protect you without the threat of margin costs. We don't speculate, we manage risk. If you're tired of paying acreage and management fees for marketing advice that hasn't actually helped your bottom line, then give us a call. Call today to get two weeks of Mark's private grain marketing email. Top Third Ag Marketing, earning the trust of American farmers every day. America needs to know that something still works in this country. One of those things that is working well is agriculture. And at U.S. Farm Report, what's crucial to me is to make sure we convey the confident, competent voice that I hear from America's farmers and rural residents, that they can count on us. Rural America works. Agriculture works. Watch U.S. Farm Report Saturday morning and Sunday afternoons on RFD-TV. U.S. Farm Report, the spirit of the countryside. Mark your calendar. Ag Connect Expo 2011 is coming to Atlanta, Georgia on January 7th through the 10th. Connect with experts. Learn new ideas, new technology. Connect to the future of agriculture, the newest innovations. Connect globally with producers from around the world. This show sets itself apart from the regional shows. Ag Connect Expo 2011, where the world of agriculture comes together. Well, Missy, I guess we really went to the field today. We're down in the middle of some corn, but we're talking about uneven emergence and these plants that maybe don't come up together. Tell us about why this happens. Yeah, what we're looking for with uneven emergence, if these plants, well, these seeds, when we first plant them and they start to germinate, we're gonna take about a third of their weight in and waters to germinate. And if we don't get the uniformity of that germination to be within about 48 hours of one another, and when I say one another, I mean this plant next to this plant next to this plant. If they don't do that within about 48 hours of one another, what we find is that they get behind or delayed in that emergence and they can never really catch back up. And why is that? Is it they just don't get enough nutrients or is there competition beyond that? It's really the competition. We really have a lot of competition, especially for light. Okay. Um, as well as obviously could be later in the season, water, nutrients, but early on it's gonna be a big factor there. So we get this too much competition and they're just never gonna catch up. What causes that? Why, why aren't they all firing at that same time? There can be a lot of things that cause this uneven emergence early on in the season. One of the things can be just uneven planting depth. And uh, if, if one seed's a little bit shallower than the other or a little bit deeper, it's gonna change that timing. We see a lot of times if we get shallow planting depth, it, it takes an extra rain before this guy can germinate in comparison to his neighbor. Okay. So we're dealing with a very little micro environment here. Right. That's right. And it all comes back to what are we looking at for the ear count? And if we look at these plants here, we notice that we have differences in their stalk diameter. Right. That's a clue today that this thing emerged unevenly or later than what this plant here did. So when we see that stalk diameter, that's our first clue. So even if we didn't have ears up here, we could probably tell that this isn't going to have an ear when this guy is. Okay. But the effect that it has on the ears can be huge. We can see here this difference in the ears that we have at this time. They're so both we, trying to put ears on, but obviously that's you right. want one, not the other. They were planted at the same time, but and it cost us the same amount of money to have these two plants out here, but one's going to have a harvestable ear. This one's never going to make it into my combine. So it's very critical 
Things like the uneven emergence, like we talked about, could be caused by planting depth, pinched residue in the seed trench, seedling blight, insects, diseases. There's a lot of reasons this could happen. You got to get out to your fields to do some digging to find out why this guy came up late. All right. Well, thanks for taking us to the field today. In today's Ask an Agronomist, one farmer asked, harvest is over, the weather is great. Can I go ahead and put my nitrogen on right now while I'm building my strips for next year? We're on the right track when we, when we talk about building a strip when the soil conditions are fit. And, and this year is a, one of those examples. Harvest is early. We're out here in September and dry. We can build an ideal strip for next year to get us off to a big bang. But no, we would not want to go ahead and put our nitrogen on at this time. We're way too warm, and the risk of staying too warm uh, is going to outrun most of our inhibitors, meaning that we're still at a pretty high risk here in September that we couldn't protect that nitrogen long enough to get these soils cooled down. I would be all for continuing to build the strip, but I would take the nitrogen out of that operation, get the strips built, let's bring our nitrogen back next spring when it'll be safer for us and we won't have to worry about the loss. Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer is designed to increase your fertilizer efficiency and can boost your yield potential by 10 to 15%. How do we know? Well, first we tested Avail in a series of university trials then across different states, different counties, different fields and farms just like yours to prove that Avail will keep phosphorus available for the entire growing season. Avail has been proven around the world and that's good news for your crop as well as your wallet. So visit chooseavail.com and see where Avail takes you. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guide permanently stops rust the easy way. No scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guide onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guide is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that kills rust on contact. It leaves a smooth finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guide protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. Call 888 Rust Guide to talk to a rust expert. That's 888 Rust Guide or go to rustguide.com. Confusion, doubt, fear, forces that drive the markets in unpredictable ways. It would be nice to find a voice you trust, a broker with an impeccable compliance record, someone with global contacts and expertise, a sought-after speaker who simply tells it like it is. All that with 30 years of experience navigating these markets. Someone like that would be quite a find. Bauer Trading. Experience at work for you. Hi, I'm Greg Vincent, the editor of AgWeb, and welcome to our new site. This marks the end of many long months by a lot of us here at Farm Journal Media, and also even some of our loyal readers who were dedicated to helping us remain the homepage of agriculture. This new site is designed to have more vibrant content, easier navigation, and faster load times while still delivering the same quality information that you've come to expect from AgWeb over the past 10 years. So go ahead and take a look around the site and let us know what you think. AgWeb, the homepage of agriculture. Missy, there's a lot of new technology and tools out there for producers. Today we want to talk about NDVI. Let's just start with the basics. What is it? Right. What NDVI stands for is Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which is kind of a big term for really all we're talking about is how healthy is the plant, what's the vegetative state of this plant at this point in time. So we're talking about images, aerial type images. Right. Uh, and as you can see from this map, this is an NDVI map. And what it is, it's in the green areas means that I have better health, that the plant's doing better. And in the red areas, it's poor vegetation or poor health. Okay, and how do we get these? Yeah, we can get these by, by uh, different ways as far as it can be flown with an airplane, it can be satellite imagery, or we're even starting to have some sensors put on ground machines on sprayers or whatever's actually traveling through the field. Okay, and our resolution depends on which way we do it? That's right. You know, the resolution, uh, you know, typically satellite's going to be larger resolution, um, not as detailed. These maps that we're going to look at today are all on one meter resolution, so just over a three foot by three foot kind of square or pixel is how defined we can actually get. Okay, and, and the timing of these, because we're looking at the vegetation, we need some vegetation in the field. That's right. We're typically going to be looking at kind of toward the end of June, make sure we got enough vegetation uh, there that we're not getting bare ground. And then we can also do some things in July or even later in the season toward dry down. It kind of depends what we're trying to do as far as our goal. Is it a scouting tool or are we just trying to create 
some management zones. Okay, well let's let's walk through some of these maps and you have some black lines on here which are those management zones. That's right. This is an example of some management zones that were set up ahead of time uh, in this field based on soil types. Okay? okay. And you can see the NDVI uh, behind here and there's some areas that aren't broke out very well. Like we can see we got a lot of red right here and this area is more into the greens and yellows. Sure. We'll take a look at this next map when we actually take these management zones and now break them down and try to fine tune them a little bit more. Okay. So that's one thing that I think these NDVIs can do is help kind of fine tune your current management zones or if you don't have management zones at all I feel that this could be a tool that could get us started. Right, it's a very first blush. Uh, what else are we going to see or be able to pick out with an NDVI photo? Well, some of the things if we think about from a troubleshooting perspective uh, is nutrient deficiencies or inadequacies. So if we take a look at this next one here, um, we can actually see some things that started coming out in this map. Right. Uh, this happened to be actually one of our plots for something else, but we noticed here on June 25th that we started getting this red straight line coming out. Mm -hmm. Straight lines and maps usually tells us <laughs> it's man-made. Look at the next one here. As we move later on in the season, we move to the August 27th. That little skinny red line I had is now a very big red line showing right. up on here. In this case, we troubleshooted it back, and it was actually a, a problem with the nitrogen application. Application. At side dress time, the anhydrous tank was running low through this pass and did not get the right radon. Oh, okay, and so we can go back and look at what we're doing in the field and see if what we're doing is right and working right. well. Yeah, when we can look at the maps and because of the accuracy of these maps, uh, we can get very detailed on uh, things like wheel tracks, etc. that's happening in the fields. So we'll take a look at this next map as actually a, of, a, of a cornfield here that had a central fill planter. Okay. okay, so a lot of weight right in the center there. We're getting more compaction underneath these wheel tracks. Okay, and that, is that what we're seeing with these lines? Yeah, you bet. You can actually see in some cases there's the red lines going across here, and they'll kind of fade into more of the yellow, but you can actually see every single planter pass that was made in this field. Wow. So when we start to think about, oh, well, what, what kind of damage am I doing with these big heavy planters with all this weight in the center, you know, the, these maps can give us that detailed accuracy. If we look at the next map here, you can actually see we've got the management zones laid, laid over this one. And in some cases, these lines from the, from the wheel track compaction is very, very red. And as we move out here, they're getting more into the light green. Okay. Um, and that's just a difference of heavier wet soil, I'm gonna have more compaction, and as I get into this was actually sand, it kind of went away. If, if we look at the last one here, the thing that we have to know is, do they make sense with yield? Because they could be great maps, but if it doesn't correlate to really what's, what's out in the field in those bushels per acre, doesn't matter. And we found very high correlation here. If you look at the NDEBI map on this side versus the yield map over here, we see some really, really good correlation. So I think NDEBI could be a great tool for the farmer's toolbox to help us get more detailed in these fields. Still to come on Corn College TV, how rough does your planter ride? Corn College TV sorts through the nuts and bolts of smooth running planters, with the end result being better stands and higher yield. Go with the brand that gets results, with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry-leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go, Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Growing up in agriculture, I know how important information is to America's farmers and ranchers. They have the tremendous responsibility of feeding this great nation. Here at Ag Day, we're here to help with the latest in agriculture news, agribusiness with Al Pell, the Big Picture on Weather with Mike Hoffman, and stories about the country way of life. Join me each morning for Ag Day, the country experience. Hi, Carrie Gottschall here with the perfect solution to your storage problem a stylish garage or shop right in your own backyard. U.S. Buildings offers you revolutionary designs that are strong, durable, easy to set up, attractive, and affordable. Why have a cluttered garage when you can have plenty of neatly organized workspace? U.S. Buildings put me in my new shop in no time. Their high-quality steel structure is American-made. It's even hurricane-rated. 
Now, I can work on my antique cars right in my own backyard. Their innovative designs require no internal support, which means you get 100% usable space. I feel like my home is twice as large because I finally have all the storage space I need. Now all my keepsakes are here at home and not stored in a rental unit across town. No wonder thousands of Americans are using U.S. Buildings. You should too. Call U.S. Buildings right now. Our service representatives are waiting to answer your questions. Build it yourself and save. Planning happens but once a year. At least we hope it happens just once a year. So what are you doing with that planner in the meantime? That's the question Missy Bauer is asking to producers. As we've heard, planning can be the most important thing you do all year. That's why she says it's a good idea to get out your tools, turn a wrench, and make sure things are running as smooth as possible in today's agronomics of equipment. Really what I like to do in the shop, and if you guys later on want to go down and look at it, we got a little motor uh, stand down on the other end and we've hooked that up to the main uh, drive seed shaft here okay and when, when we're in the in the shop the first thing I usually do if we're gonna run this thing is I go ahead and I take all my boxes off first and I'll usually run it first I'll just be looking at these chains and as I'm running I'm looking for any chains that maybe got a frozen link in them or as they're coming through the rollers there you can see where they bounce or jump a little bit um, I'm also at that time going to be checking my bearings. Um, you see this planter has had the bearings replaced once on it already. What I typically do is take a screwdriver, a real long handled screwdriver, stick the end right down on the base of the bearing, and just put the under, other end up to my ear and actually just listen. You can actually hear all those little balls in there, uh, uh, the, the bearing balls rolling around, and if you get one that's starting to go out, you'll hear it sound a lot more rough, okay? And once you listen to it a few, few times, if you haven't done that before, you'll be able to pick out if you got a bearing going bad. The other thing, obviously, we're gonna be looking at is the chains. I mean, when we see a chain, a chain like that, it, it is pretty much a no-brainer, but believe it or not, this did come off a planter that had left the field, so. Or maybe it's a little more tricky as you see a chain, Somewhere in here, there's just one link that's frozen. And this looks like it would be a pretty good chain, but every time it come through, we seen where it, it bumped and made this transmission system jerk a little bit. The other thing when we're spinning that is, is looking at your shaft, as far as in your main uh, dr uh, drive shaft where you're setting your population, there's shafts in there. These will get uh, bent over time. If anybody wants to look at this one later, it has a pretty good bend in it and a twist in it. Uh, and we've had uh, problems with those in the past as well. So let's go ahead and spin this again. The first thing I normally do is have all the boxes off. We're going to sit here and watch these and we can see that we definitely got some chains that got some frozen links in them and it's just not running very smooth. Uh, a lot of these are bouncing around. They'll come through these rollers and you'll see them kind of bounce or jump. And if we have problems like that, we're going to want to go ahead then and, and switch the, the chain itself. The other thing I then do after we've checked the bearings, checked the chains, um, obviously any rollers or conditions like that as well, then I go ahead and I put the boxes on, but I leave the boxes unlatched. You'll actually see where they'll be walking on us kind of back and forth like this, okay? If we're seeing that, the problem there is going to be in this seed meter uh, connection where we're coming from this shaft out of the meter from the drive shaft here, that actually the alignment of these two shafts will not be correct. So what we want to do is take this whole spring assembly off here with this disconnect lever, take all that off, set the box back in there, and actually feel or rub along the shaft here to here, and rub back and forth, and those should line up pretty good. If they're not lined up right, then that's where we're going to make the adjustment. You've got bolts here you can loosen and get this thing moved around to make adjustments. This is a big problem, especially on these older planters. And once you feel and get that adjusted right lined up, then we shouldn't be having a box that's walking on us. So that's important. It's a pretty big problem that we do see in the field. On some of the newer planters, what we end up with as far as the, the shaft alignment, where the planter folds, together where our main shaft that's running across there, we have kind of, I call them the dog ears that's trying to put these together uh, to, to connect these two shafts. And what happens here a lot of times is the, the height of this shaft and the one here is off. 
And if they are not perfectly even in line, we're actually going to have a change in the RPMs of that shaft. And we've seen this before where you can actually see that it'll end up changing your population. You can see that it'll kind of speed it up and it can kind of slow it down because it's not running true there. There's room that you can make some adjustments there as far as getting them adjusted uh, to get those running true. Thanks, Missy. And that's going to wrap us up on another episode of Corn College TV. Of course, you can always go online and catch up on episodes or segments you might have missed. Until next time, keep corn on the brain, and remember, our tuition won't break the bank. See you next time. Class dismissed. Next time on Corn College TV, protecting your investment, learn what goes into a quality pest management system, plus ears equal yield. We'll show you how to project ear count early in the season. And sizing your equipment for the job, over or under buying can till your profits straight into the ground. That's next time on Corn College TV. Corn College TV is produced and distributed by Farm Journal Television.